and welcome to this tech video. Today we're going to talk about die cutting plates and problems with using old die cutting plates on new machines with a different drum size in the machine. So we're talking about a really annoying problem that can give a lot of callbacks, faulty orders and quality control issues. I'm going to show it to you here. If we look, here we have a web of label and if the distortion or crimp of the plate is not correct, we are going to have a wrong gap size here. So maybe you could just have a look at this with the camera. So here we have a bigger gap and here we have all the small gaps. So if we have the plate, the big gap is appearing where the plates meet up. So it's the inter-repeat gap. Now, we can fix this in the machine software so your job looks perfect. And let me just try and explain the problem in a visual way. So plate distortion is about making a die cutting plate and when you wrap it around a cylinder it's designed to have a certain size when you have wrapped it around. So when it's flat it has one distance around, when you wrap it around it has another distance. So if you take a plate from one machine with one size of cylinder and transfer it to another machine with a bigger size of cylinder, the mathematics goes wrong and then you don't have the right place size. Let me try and show it here. So if we have a die cutting plate that's lying down flat and we have a distance here between the two points, call it X. If we wrap it around a cylinder, Now we have the same distance, but it's not x anymore, it is x plus something. That little something is called distortion or crimp. So every plate you buy is from the manufacturer made a little bit smaller. So when you wrap it around a cylinder, it actually has the right size. So the problem comes if you take your good old, let's say, 80 set so 80 set plate that fits around a cylinder that's exactly 10 inch around. Then you put it on a new digital machine that has a big drum of 200 set. Then what happens is that now the plate moved to the bigger cylinder has a wrong crimp and that will give you a bigger gap. Now let's get practical. I'm going to show you how that looks in the machine. So we have a really tricky job set up here. It's an old plate, 80 set, 10 inches. So you can see in this, just by looking down here, you can see there is a problem. Big gap, small gap, small gap, small gap. You can also see it in the matrix, in the matrix for the machine. Let me find a point. You see it here. There is a big gap and then a lot of small gaps. So let me run the machine. And you see we have this problem all the time. If you look down here on the web, you'll see, whoops, there we go again, problem. Now, in our machines, we have built in an on the fly correction for gap. Bear in mind, this is a compensation. When we ask the machine to compensate for a die, for a die plate that actually doesn't fit the cylinder, we actually forcing the die plate through the material. That's not an optimal way of running, but it can save you buying a new plate. What is the price? When you force a machine to do something, there's always a price. The price here is that if you ask the machine to do compensation to kind of stretch the die plate to make up for that gap, then you get a speed dependent process. That means that you can adjust it, it will run very well, but run at the same speed all the time. When you're using compensation, don't play around with the speed, run at a steady speed. Because as you are drawing the paper through a knife and it doesn't have the right speed, it depends on how fast you're running. If you're running faster, it may slide a little longer compared to if you're running shorter. So let's show it on the machine. I have set up now compensation here. I'm going to put the compensation for 2% down in size. 
So we are now at 98. I'm going down. Maybe I need to go a little faster here. So now I'm compensating 2%. 1.0 is the theoretical size. 98 is 2% less. So when I run now, you're going to hear the machine struggling. It will say clonk, clonk for every rotation, but it will fix it. It will fix the gap. So the clock will come in a second. Clock, you could hear it. Clock. I'm going to put my pen down so you can see the compensation. So look down here. No problem. All the gaps are the same. The beauty of this, on this machine, is that you can actually do it on the fly. While the machine is running, you can just say gap is too small, gap is too large, tip tap back and forward, and you can just it, adjust it to get it just right. So, that's all for today. Thank you for watching this tech video, and do remember to press the subscribe button if you want to see more videos about how to make label in a smart way. Thank you for watching.